What's up everyone, welcome back. Today we have a big one on the channel. It's my review of the normal Tormir. Killian Jornet helped design this shoe for long days in the mountains, but does this shoe live up to its hype? Is it good enough, not only for Killian Jornet, but also for you? In this review, we're gonna do our best to find that out. Said at the top, the shoe was sent out to me for review by Normal. Let's go over a couple of stats. In a size nine, this weighs 10 ounces and 285 grams, but in my a size 11.5, it came in at 11.43 ounces. In the heel, we have a stack of 31 millimeters and a drop of eight millimeters, making this shoe a pretty aggressive trail runner. I've been wearing this shoe off and on for about two months and have about 50 miles in it, including multiple long runs of a 15 miler and a 20 miler. I've taken it through all types of different environments, pretty much thrown everything I could at this shoe uh, because I really wanted to, with a brand new company like Normal, I really wanted to throw everything I could at it uh, to give you guys a really proper opinion on who I think this shoe is for, what its purpose is, and why you might wanna pick it up or possibly wait until the next version. So let's get straight into the review. First up, talking about the fit. Uh, now the sizing of this shoe was just a little bit off for me. I got my normal size of 11.5 and it was just a little bit big. Long in the toe and there just felt like it was flexing in the wrong places, uh, kind of in my forefoot. Um, the whole time I was wearing this shoe, I just felt like maybe I would have done better to get a half size down. I didn't reach out to Normal to ask if they could send me another one. One of the big points of this shoe is to leave no trace. Everything behind this company is about making shoes to last. So I didn't really think that'd be the right thing to do. So I just went with the 11 and a half, which did feel a little bit big. Uh, just know that if you're ordering these shoes online, maybe size down a half size. As far as the comfort goes, I am going to have to say they were unfortunately slightly uncomfortable. Um, I think that Normal is still trying to dial in kind of like their foot geometry and how their midsoles react with their uppers. But the whole time I was wearing this, I was just waiting for the shoe to break in. Uh, and in my opinion, after 50 miles, if the shoe doesn't feel broken in and doesn't feel really comfortable, then that's actually a problem. They went for a little bit of a firmer EVA, so I'm not counting that against the comfort. Uh, that's just, that's part of it. Like some shoes are a little bit more firm, a little bit more responsive. Some shoes are a little bit more cushiony and maybe comfortable. The overall, how the midsole reacts with the upper, the geometry of it, just the materials they've chosen, all of it put together, definitely needs a second version before it really dials in the comfort. It also didn't feel very secure, especially going downhill until I really cranked down these laces to where the two parts of the upper here were almost touching each other. Uh, and it just felt so incredibly tight that it was uncomfortable on the top of my foot. But once I did that, uh, it felt secure. Uh, the heel is just a little bit oversized compared to other shoes and there's very little padding in there. I think that's, you know, it's okay. Like it's not, not counting points against this again for the way they've designed the shoe as far as the comfort goes, like they're going for that minimal feel. There's really not a whole lot of dynamics to this heel cut back here and there's really not a lot of padding. And so it's kind of like you get what you get as soon as you put your foot in, there's not really much of a lock. So what I had to resort to was really cranking down the laces to push my foot down and back so that on downhills, especially, I wouldn't just feel like my foot was kind of swimming in there. Throughout my testing, the upper was also constantly flexing and pushing in on my foot. Uh, it's a very, very strong material on this upper. Like it's a woven material that I don't think you could, I think it would take, if you took a knife to this, it would take you a while to cut through this. The whole point of this shoe is to last forever in my opinion. Uh, but there are some trade-offs with the comfort. So that probably sounded like a lot of you know, not so great news about this shoe, but let's move on to the ride. And here's where I'm gonna give the normal Tormir a lot of praise because I really enjoyed running in this shoe when I was focused on the ride, how it was making me run, the energy transfer, how it felt out on the trails. Like I said before, it's an EVA midsole, so fairly standard there, but it's a little bit on the firmer side. That's okay, I enjoy a slightly firmer EVA midsole on trail running shoes because I think it provides a lot of responsiveness and a lot of, you just get a much better 
uh, ground feel out there rather than being a highly cushioned, super absorbent shoe. If you go just a little bit more on the firmer side, you're going to get a better experience out there in shorter distances, in my opinion. Uh, so, you know, every trail running shoe is a little bit different. This one goes for a little bit more of that responsive, reactive feel. I just really liked the geometry of the midsole. I felt like the eight millimeter drop was super fun. With the heel, at first I was a little concerned with kind of how big it was, but it didn't bother me at all when I was out there running. And especially on downhills, having this extra area back here where you can kind of crash down on, then follow through on your foot strike, it just really provided a really great ride out there. If you do try this shoe out and your first couple runs, you're not really sure about the midsole and you think, well, maybe if I keep running in this, the EVA will soften up a little bit. I would say it's probably not gonna happen, uh, at least not in the first 50 miles. Now, maybe if you get a couple hundred miles into this shoe, it will soften up, but at that point, kind of like, why are you still running in this shoe if you don't like it? So just know that going into it, those of you that like a little bit of a firmer, more responsive midsole, this is definitely gonna be something that you enjoy. And moving right along, let's talk about the performance of the normal Tormir. And this one, again, I'm gonna praise it highly because we have to talk about this outsole. And oh my gosh, normal, you knocked it out of the park. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that this is by far the best outsole I've ever ran in in a trail running shoe. It's got four and a half millimeter lugs on a Vibram Mega Grip outsole. The way the lugs are positioned, they're actually really spaced out far apart. So the shoe acts a little bit more like cleats out there when you're in kind of soft ground. Even on hard ground, I didn't mind it so much because it did flex and move enough. Now running on pavement is not gonna be a good experience in this shoe, but if you're sticking to the trails, if you're a mountain runner, you got a lot of up and down, steep stuff. I'm not kidding when I tell you that there's something going on with this outsole, it's a special one. I was bombing down stuff without a care in the world and I was just sticking to everything I put my foot down on. I am in love with it and I was honestly thinking while I was out there, if I could just rip this outsole off and put it on some of my other trail running shoes, this is what I would pick if I was getting into anything sketchy, anything soft ground, anything that I knew I needed absolute, like the best grip out there this is what I'd be going for. And we do have to talk about water crossings because with this unique upper and the overlays, I really wanted to make sure that I tested that out several times. On my first water crossing, this shoe actually collected a lot of sand and debris inside and then it didn't come out while I was running. And I had to actually stop and take off both of my shoes dump all the stuff out and clean off, clean out the insides with my hands. It did not drain water very well. And again, I think part of it has to do with these overlays that go all around pretty much the base of the midsole. You're not gonna get any water coming out except for when the shoe flexes. One problem with it though, is that a lot of the water collects and squeezes out of the top right here, right above your toes. And then it just goes straight back into the shoe. I think that they could have taken this overlay and put some reinforced holes in just the overlay. So you still get the upper material behind it, but it would just give opportunity for water to escape while you are running after a water crossing. The shoe also did hold a lot of sweat and water for a long time afterwards, so it's not one that is gonna air out really fast. Along with the performance, we do need to talk about the laces a little bit and the way they are shaped on this shoe. They're not symmetrical, they're a little bit asymmetrical. As you can see, they just go off towards your toe just a little bit. There wasn't really anything good or bad about this. Uh, sometimes it's kind of fun when the laces go in a different way. I didn't really feel like it added anything to the shoe, but it definitely didn't take anything away either. The upper we've already talked about a little bit, but sticking with the performance theme of this section, uh, you're gonna get some just amazing life out of this shoe. I would put the strength and durability of this upper against any shoe out there. The upper and the midsole are actually sewn together all around. So in some shoes, you know, you're gonna get a little bit of separation there. It's not gonna happen with this shoe at all. Again, the theme of lasting forever is just apparent everywhere you look in this shoe. Now let's talk about the best uh, distances for training or racing in this shoe. Um, there's gonna be some people that really enjoy this shoe as a 100 miler shoe if 
you're going for a little bit more of that responsive firm midsole feel. Uh, if you can deal with the upper, if it flexes in the right places for you. I think a lot of people are gonna find this shoe's sweet spot to be long days out in the mountains. So the normal tour mirror is coming in at about $160 right now. And I think that's a really, really good deal for this shoe because if it works for you, it's gonna last for a long time. And to wrap up my reaction, who is this shoe for? Should you get it? Why would you get it now? Uh, I think this shoe is gonna be for someone that spends a lot of time in bad conditions, up in the mountains, technical terrain. You have to have a really, really sure footing. You have to have a shoe that's gonna last for a long time. You have to have a shoe that's gonna be durable. You have to have a shoe that is just big and burly and can just smash through the roughest of stuff. This shoe is gonna be the one for you if that's the type of trail runner you are. It's not gonna be for someone that likes a light, fast shoe. If you run a lot of dry, buffed out trails, your trails aren't very technical at all, you don't really get in a whole lot of mud, this shoe is going to feel a little bit heavy and a little bit slow. Killian Journey helped design this shoe, and so it just makes sense that it finds its home in the mountains. So if that's the type of runner you are, maybe give it a shot. And I do wanna say that I really respect Normal for how they're going about their business, how they are respecting the environment, and making sustainable shoes that are meant to last for a really long time. That's not something that's super common today. So with that, thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this shoe, if you've tried it out before, or if you're interested and have any questions, leave them in the comments down below, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.